So were you writing music before you got into pop stars or bardo? Uh, not hugely. I was in a jazz band before I auditioned for pop stars. So yeah. I, I mean, I've always been musical, but I wasn't really writing at that point. Mm. Um, and that wasn't something that I seriously got into until after I left the band. So when I got to work with Disco Montego yeah. and recorded Beautiful and Magic, um, yeah. I got a chance to uh, to write to co-write Beautiful. So that was really satisfying. Mm. Um, and then to receive a songwriting award for that was just the icing on the cake. So that was probably my first um, feeling of validation as a total package, not just a good singer and a look but someone who can actually write something that's going to be commercially successful. So that felt like a big win. Um, and, yeah, and there's just been a few others, obviously, over the years. What was it like working with Darren and Dennis? They were brilliant. Mm. Um, they were workaholics. Okay. Uh, in that, at that time, they were also partyaholics. So it was <laughs> all work, all play, yeah. all the time. Uh, there was no off switch. Um, so when I was touring with them, when we were touring Beautiful for a couple of years, it was a lot of fun, mm. but I definitely drank way too much during those <laughs> years uh, yeah. and that made the travel plans a little bit more insane come yeah. the morning. Yeah. I remember one morning we were, I don't even know what time we'd gone to bed mm. and next thing we knew it was 9 o'clock and our tour manager's at the door going, uh, guys, we've got like an hour to get to the airport yeah. and you're not even, no one's even in their rooms. We didn't know where everyone was and we we're all like ah, dragging <laughs> ourselves together. It was horrible. Um, apparently we were having a good time but, yeah, I look back on that and just shake my head at my young, mm. young foolish self. <laughs> so in comparison to Bardo, the, the Disco Montego period was much more fun. Yeah. Um, not as much fun for my liver, but lots of fun <laughs> for my, you know, mid twenties uber pop star dance icon, you know, period. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was it was good fun. It was yeah. good fun for a couple of years, but like anything, too much of a good thing can become just too much. So yeah, no. Yeah. If there's anything I can tell you, Mauritians love to drink. Right. <laughs> okay. Mm. Um, lifestyle aside, they were incredibly talented producers mm. and writers and singers and, um, you know, in the early days of working with them it was quite intimidating because even though I was, you know, always fairly confident in my own skills and my own talent, mm. um, you know, there were days they would just open up their mouths to sing or, or down would pick up the guitar and play something. It was just like, man, it's just how can you pack that much talent into one <laughs> human body? I just couldn't understand it mm. so they were just brilliant to uh, to work with well, yeah I, I would put them as a team they were on like genius level i, I felt when they really um, were when uh, i think it was darren the past that uh, i felt like that australia really lost some really yep. like a gold nugget like some real talent there you know because i remember the song that they yeah. wrote uh as kaylin uh rock me all night and that was a uh, like yeah. For me, that was like on par with American music, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Do you remember that song? Well, the, the, yeah, I do. And the, the tragedy was that they had just moved to the States and they were mm. just starting to work with some other really big name uh, artists and producers over there and it was just, uh, I mean, the obvious shock, you know, yeah. that Darren was unwell and then, and then his passing. But just the timing of it, you know, they would – just getting started really yeah. on the international scale and it was just tragic from a professional point of view that, yeah, that we um, we didn't get to continue to see what they could have been capable of as a, as a team. Yeah. But, look, Dennis went on and did some incredible stuff. When he formed Electric Empire, I think, was when I hooked back into what he'd been doing. Yeah. Um, and I remember going to one of the gigs that he did in Melbourne and, and listening through that album and it's just sublime. If you haven't heard of it, Electric Empire, um, was the last album that he did. Um, yeah. yeah, it was just just stunning, just really stunning body of work. Yeah, believe it or not, that's actually on my to-do list to do next is to listen to that album. I was just having a look into him yesterday. Um, do and, it, yeah. do it. You won't regret it. There's <laughs> some golden golden nuggets on that on that well, album. Oh, uh, definitely, I'll do that. <laughs> 